Now, I've claimed that linked lists are sequences. But in order to verify that, we need to show that we can implement the sequence abstraction. The sequence abstraction says that every sequence needs to have a finite length and support element selection, where we give it an index and it gives us back the element at that index. So let's just dive right into the code. Here's an iterative implementation of a function len link, which takes in a linked list s and returns the length of the sequence that it represents. By starting at zero, and then while we haven't reached the empty list at the very end, we simultaneously bind s to the rest of s and length to one more than whatever it was before. So as s iterates through the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest of s, the length increases. And by the time we reach the empty list at the end, we just return the length. To get a particular item at index i, we keep changing i until it reaches 0, and simultaneously rebind s to the rest of s. After that process is finished, we're now looking for the element at index 0 of possibly some smaller list than we started with, and the element at index 0 is just called first s. So let's look at an environment diagram to see what's going on here. In order to get started, we do need to define the empty list, the function that links things together, the ability to get the first and the rest out, and then we can define the function that gets a particular element of a list. Building a list requires several function calls. We link together for and empty. We then uh, link together one and that, and then we link together three and that. We get the sequence representation of three and then one and then four. Three, one, four, empty. They are represented in our diagram. Okay, so our final step here is to bind that to the name s and then call get item link on s and two. So this will introduce a new frame. s is this whole linked list structure, which will be passed in as the first argument, and then we'll pass in two as well. So this didn't change, s is still bound to it, but now we have a new frame in which s is bound currently to this pair, which is the very beginning of the sequence one, uh, 3, 1, 4. Okay, now let's look at the body of get item link, which we just described. While i is greater than 2, we're going to move along the linked list by rebinding s to the rest of s. So i starts out at 2, which is obviously greater than 0. When we change i, we also change s. We don't change the list, but we rebind s to the rest of the list. So we have to figure out what the rest of the list is using the rest function, and then we rebind it right there. So now we're looking for the element at index 1 of the sequence 1, 4. Calling rest one more time, we're now looking for the element at index 0 of the sequence 4. And the answer is easy. We just return the first element there, which is the number 4, which eventually gets bound to at index 2 based on this line. 